Hi, everybody. Welcome to iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. I'm Paulina Ionina, a community manager at iSpring, and I will be the moderator for today's session, where we will be talking, but not only talking, but showing how to build a dialect simulation with iSpring from scratch. And to cover this topic, I have invited the most, um, I, I want to say appropriate, but <laughs> the perfect person uh, for this, my colleague from tech support department, Nancy Clark. Hi, Nancy. Thanks a lot for tuning in. How are you doing today? Hello, everyone. Hi, Paulina. Thank you for inviting me. I'm doing great. And you? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks a lot for asking. And at this point, I think we are more than ready to begin. So, Nancy, I'm happily passing the mic over to you as well as the presenter rights. Thank you so much, Paulina. Just let me quickly turn my camera off and share my screen. Today, I'm going to show you how, how you can use iSpring Talk Master 2 to create effective and realistic dialect simulations. In today's webinar, we will talk about, first, what the dialect simulation is and how we can use it in the e-learning process. Second, the necessity of creating a dialect tree that will work as a draft for your future simulation. And third, building a dialect simulation from scratch with iSpring Talk Master tool. And the last, possible ways of using dialects as skill training or knowledge checks. I encourage you to stay to the very end of this webinar because we will not only cover the basic functionality for creating dialect simulations, but also some less well-known features that you can use to make your dialect simulations more lifelike. Let's start with a quick overview of what we can use dialect simulations for. With iSpring Talk Master, you can easily create effective and realistic dialects that help your learners practice their skills in a safe environment and avoid the most common mistakes while working with people. You can use your dialect as a practice tool or as a knowledge check. That way, your users will learn new information from their mistakes, which can increase the effectiveness of training. You can make your courses more realistic and interactive by implementing any kind of case scenario, choosing a suitable character and location from the built-in libraries, or by uploading your own. Besides, you can also enhance dialogues with voiceovers and many other interesting features. For today's demo, I have prepared a dialogue that simulates the first conversation with a client who is thinking about changing their eating habits. Some of you who participated in the first session of this webinar series a week ago have seen this dialogue, but let me quickly show it one more time for our new attendees. Our dialogue begins with a greeting scene and a description of the situation for the learner in order to immerse them in the actual story. This is an important part of any dialogue because the user needs to understand the situation fully in order to think in the appropriate direction and make the correct decisions. Let's hit the start button to take some scenes as an example. In the first scene, the client introduces herself and talks about her problem. We need to choose a phrase to continue the dialogue with. Let's say, cool, I can't wait to get started. What do you usually eat for lunch? As far as we can see, this answer was not appropriate for this situation because we rushed to ask questions before engaging the client in the conversation. To let learners know that they answered incorrectly, we added a feedback message here with an explanation. Also, here we can see that we didn't get any points for that answer and our client became disappointed. By clicking on continue, we have a chance to replay the scene by choosing the correct answer. Now see what happened. We choose the correct answer and we're able to proceed to the next scene and get some points. In this scene, we only have one response, so we will choose it and move on to the next scene. Now we can see a description of our client's meals. Let's try to answer that everything is great and the client doesn't need to change anything. 
we can see that this was a serious mistake because this sensor did not match with the information in our course. Now let's click Restart to retake the simulation. To save time, I will click for several scenes that we already viewed. And now we are back on the scene where we chose the incorrect answer. Let's select the correct answer instead to move on to the next scene. We can see that by selecting that answer, we get points and our client stays happy and engaged in the conversation, which means that we are on the right track. Now I want to give a more detailed answer to our client so she understands what we are going to work on. So I will choose the second option. Among these answers, I would choose the easiest way for the client. So I will choose answer number one. In this scene, we only have one answer. Click on it and move on to the final scene. Congratulations, it seems that we passed the simulation. I hope that everyone could see how our dialog simulation works. Today, we are going to build this simulation from scratch, so you can get the main idea of creating a dialog and go through the basic steps with us. Before creating any simulation in Icebreak Talk Pasture, we highly recommend you build a dialog tree that will show the different scenarios. This step will help you avoid having to redo parts of the simulation and will minimize the number of possible mistakes in the configuration. You can create a draft version of your dialog in any program, such as Word or PowerPoint, in some specific drawing tools like LucidChat or even on a sheet of paper. Let's take a look at the dialog tree that I have made. Here we can see several scenarios that the user can follow. Along the way, if the user chooses an answer that was close to the correct one. A shorter way, if the user chooses a totally correct answer. Loop scenes that allow users to move on one step back if they made a minor mistake and a deaded scene that force the user to replay the simulation if they make a serious mistake. Now we can move on to the process of creating a dialog simulation based on this tree. Okay, great. Before we start, uh, let's take a brief look at the iSpring Talkmaster functionality that we can use for this purpose. To do this, I am going to open iSpring Talkmaster. There are three ways to do this, from the window start menu, from the iSpring Suite shortcut on the desktop, and from the iSpring Suite ribbon in PowerPoint. I will launch it by double-clicking on the iSpring Suite icon on my desktop. To start creating a dialog, I will click where it says Simulations, and then Create. Great. Here you can see a blank area where different scenarios can start. All right, let's start creating our new dialog by adding scene number one. I'll find the scene sections on the main toolbar and click where it says new scene. Here you can see three main tabs, content, images, and properties. Let's take a closer look at these tabs. In the content tab, you can enter character speech, replies, and messages. By clicking on this great area, you can add a character to the specific scene. And here you can change the character's emotion to make your dialog more realistic. As for the bottom controls, you can preview the specific scene by clicking on this play icon. You can make the scene as a start scene by clicking on the flag icon here. And to delete the scene, just click on this trash icon. Now let's go to the Images tab again. Here you can set up a character and the background for your dialog simulations. Basically, you are able to add characters and backgrounds in three different ways. First, you can select them from the built-in library. If your character just don't fit your content perfectly, you can insert your own by clicking on this 
add character icon. And this will be the second way. And the third way is to add characters from the content library by clicking on add from content library. Now I will close this window. And in the last property step, you can change the color of each scene as you prefer. Different colors will allow you to navigate among specific information blocks, such as loop scenes or dead ends within our dialog tree. Great, now we can return to the images tab and add a character to our dialog. Uh, let's choose one from the content library. Okay, let's select a character. For example, it can be Emma. And then I should click insert. All right. And now I think that we are ready to set up the background for our scene. Let's click on the background tab here and select a background from the building section. Let's choose uh, one that reminds us of a cafe and then click on close to apply all the settings. Now let's go back to the content tab. Now I'm going to copy and paste the text from the script file that I've prepared. Let me quickly open it. Here it is. Uh, here's our script and if you can take a look at the script, you will see the character speech with a person icon, messages with a word bubble icon, and responses with arrows. I'll copy and paste this into the appropriate fields when creating a new scene. Later, I will show you how you can export the script and why you may need to do this. We are going to start our dialogue by adding an intro message for the first scene to involve our learner to the story. To do this, I will click on add message and copy the text from my script and paste it here. Well, now let me quickly move my script to a different screen and preview this scene. I'm happy with the way it looks, so we can go ahead and create new scene. But before closing this preview window, let me quickly cover the main controls on the top bar. If you click where it says edit scene, you will be redirected to the window with the content, images, and property steps to continue editing the current scene. The replay button allows you to play this scene from the beginning. You can return to the previous scene by clicking where it says previous scene. One other important thing I have to mention here is that you can preview this dialogue appearance on a desktop, tablet, and mobile phones. Now let's click on close to apply all the settings. Okay, now let's create a new scene. I'll share one more interesting tip that will save you a huge amount of time. There is no need to click on a new scene on the main toolbar. You can simply select the response, our message, and drag the link to create a new scene. Now let's do this together. Let's mouse over this link icon next to the response. When you see drag to link, just click on it and drag a new scene whenever you want. Then release the mouse button to create a second scene, which will be linked with the previous one automatically. Now I'm going to copy the text from my script to fill in character speech and responses boxes. Just give me one moment and I will copy it here. It will be our first reply and this will be our second reply. Here we can also set up the motion meter. According to our dialog tree, this is route is the correct one. So we will make our client happy. Then we need to highlight this route so we can navigate easily through several scenes in our dialog. To do this, I will click on properties and select the green color here for the current scene and highlight the first scenario. By the way, if I go to the images tab, you will notice that all these images remain unchanged. This is because an option called same as previous scene was automatically applied to the next scenes in our dialog because we created it by using the drag to link option.
Now I will close it to save all changes. All right. Now let's move on and create scene number three. In scene two, we have two answers. One that is correct and one that is incorrect. Let's create a loop scene so our users can go one scene back and choose the correct answer in case they made a mistake. For this scene, we will add a character speech and the feedback message explaining why this answer is not appropriate for our situation to make it clear to the user. I'll copy the text for scene number three from my script. Right? and add a feedback message here. Okay. And since this is a minor mistake and our client was just a little bit upset, we will change the emotion meter to puzzled. And under properties, we will make this scene orange to be able to identify this type of scenes from others. Next, I will click on close and drag the link from this reply to scene number two so our users can go back and replay the scene. For the correct answer in scene number two, we will create scene number four by dragging the link. I'm going to copy and paste the text from my script here and add a reply. As you have noticed, if we create a new scene by using the drag the link option, not only the character and background remain the same, but also character emotion and the scene color. This is very convenient because we don't have to change the settings if we are creating one of the scenarios of the dialogue. Since this is the character route, I will leave a happy emotion here and scene color unchanged. Then I will close the window to save the settings. Now let's create scene number five in the same exact way. I will drag the link from scene number four and copy the text from my script. It will be my character speech and I will add three replies here. All right, and the last one. In this scene, we have three types of answers. Completely incorrect, which is option number one, correct one, which is option number two, and partially correct, which is option number three. Since we are still creating the correct route, I won't change the emotion meter and the color of the scene. Now I will close this window to save changes and drag this scene a little bit, okay. Now we are ready to create a dead end for the first incorrect option in scene number five. I will drag the link, move it here, and copy the text from a dead end scene. I will add a feedback message here. And then I will change the emotion meter to unhappy to show customer dissatisfaction. Then let's go to the property step. Here I will make this scene red because it's a dead end of our dialogue, which means that the dialogue will be finished and learners cannot move forward or go back to the previous scene. They will need to start the entire dialogue again. Now I will click close to start the window. All right. For the correct answer in scene number five, we will create scene number seven by dragging the link. Okay. I'm going to move on to my script again and copy the character speech here and add replies. Right, this will be the second one and the last one. This is the correct route in our dialogue, so I will leave a happy motion here and the scene color unchanged. Now I will close this window to save changes, right? And for the last answer in scene number five, which is partially correct, I'm going to create a loop scene 
so our users can go once and back in case they chose the incorrect answer. For this scene, we will add character speech and the feedback message explaining why this answer is not appropriate for the situation. I will copy this text from my script, add a character speech, and add a message. Then I will change the emotion meter to puzzled. Under properties, I will make this scene orange, so I can distinguish this type of scenes from others. Let's click close and then drag the link back to scene number five. So our users can go back and replay the scene again. Now let's add scenes to the answers of scene number seven. Let's add a scene for a totally correct answer that will lead the user to the end of the simulation more directly in a shorter way. I will drag the link and copy the text for scene number nine. And add several replies here. Okay. It will be the second one, and I will add one more reply for this scene. All right. Next, let's uh, link the incorrect options in scene number nine and scene number seven to the dead end scene just by dragging the link and coming to scene number six. And same with scene number nine. All right. So this dead end will force our users to replay the entire dialogue. Next, we will go and create a new scene for the correct answer in scene number seven, which will be scene number 10. This scenario will lead the user down a longer road with additional scenes. For this scene, I will add a feedback message so users can understand what they need to pay attention to in further communication. I'm going to paste, copy and paste the text here and add a feedback message. All right. And here I will change the motion meter to normal and color this route in pink for easy identification of this route in the future. All right, next we will create scenes number 11 and 12 of the branches in our scenario. I'll copy the text for scene number 11. Paste it here and add one reply to this scene. All right, so now I will set the emotion meter to normal as it is and I will check that this this scene is colored in pink. Okay, seems that everything is okay. I'm close the window. And then we can create scene number 12 in the same exact way with two answers. The correct one, which will lead a shorter way, and the one that is close to the correct one, which will lead to a longer way. Now let's copy the character speech for scene number 12 and add replies here. Okay, now I close this window and move on to the next scene. Now we'll create a scene for the longer way for the answer in scene number 12. It will be scene number 13. I'll copy the text for the scene, paste it here and add replies. Then we will set the motion meter again as normal and color the scene in light blue because it's an additional scene in our dialog and it should have a different color. Now I will click on close. And now we will go back a bit to one of the answers of scene number nine, which was close to the correct one and add a scene 14 to this path. All right. Edges. Then 
I will copy the text from my script and fill in character speech and add two replies for this scene. So here we will set the emotion meter as normal and color this scene in light blue as scene number 13, because both of those scenes serve as an optional scenes to different paths. Then I will click on close. Next, we will create scene number 15 with a feedback message for the wrong answers in scenes number 13 and 14. So our learners know that they made a mistake. Okay. I will drag the link here and copy the text for scene number 16 and paste it in the message. We will color it in orange as previous loop scenes and set the emotion meter to puzzled. Since this was a minor mistake, we will move our users back a few scenes to scene number nine. Let's drag the link and put it here so that our learners can replay just a part of the simulation. Now we'll create a scene where all the correct answers to all the scenarios will converge. So I will click on the link in scene number nine to create scene number 16. I'll copy the text, paste it here, and add the reply. We'll set the emotion meter here as happy, and this scene should be colored in green. All right, and click on close. So now we need to link this scene with all the correct answers in our scenes. It will be scene number 12, scene number 14. and one of the replies on scene number 13. Great. And we also have one reply in scene number 13, which is incorrect. So we will link it with the scene number 15. And now let's create a final scene with a feedback message to let learners know that they did everything right. I will drag the link and copy the last scene text here. All right. It looks like we are done with the creating scenes for our simulation. Now let's see how our dialog tree looks. We can move some scenes in this path to see different scenarios. All right. To make our dialog simulation even more engaging, we can add a voice to it. To do that, we need to click where it says voiceover. Here you can see a script with all messages, replies, and character speech on the left pane. As you can see on this pane, we have several ways to record and import voiceovers. If you want to add voice to your dialogue, you can send the exported script to professional voice artists or do the voiceovers yourself. You can record voice either in the third party app or right inside Talkmaster. You can do this by selecting the scene and clicking the record button on the main ribbon. Or you can just click on this red button next to each scene. Another great way to create a recording is to use the text to speech feature in iSpring Suite. This is a very useful feature that allows you to use the built-in voices of different people with different accents. You can use this function when you record the screencast in iSpring Camp Pro and also in Manage Narration. Let me play a quick video to show you how to create audio by using this feature and add it to your dialogue. Let's try to use text-to-speech option for our dialogue. I am going to double click on the iSpring Suite icon on my desktop and then click where it says Screencasts. Now I will create a project. Next I will click on Audio and select Text to Speech. 
then I will need to copy the text from my script and enter it here. Just give me one moment to do this. Great, here it is. I can select different voices here and preview them to choose the most appropriate one. So let's select this voice and preview it. Hi, my name is Evelyn. I can easily convert your text to speech. Great, this voice works perfectly for my project. So I can move on and click on insert. Once the audio track has been created, I will click on save on computer to save my audio track. I will save it on my desktop and then when I'm ready, click on save. Great. Now I'm going back to my simulation and click where it says import and then import from file. Great. Now I need to select my file here and click on open. Great, now let's preview this scene to see how it works. Welcome to your meeting with your first client. Her name is Jennifer. She wants to get fit and wonders where to start. She really needs your knowledge of nutrition, as well as your support. Great, now our character can speak. And you can add audio files to the rest of the scenes if needed. So now I'm going to click on close voiceover mode to move on to my dialogue. Thank you so much for watching and now we are going to move on to our dialogue and explore other features that iSpring Talkmaster offers us. For example, you can easily test your learner's knowledge by adding scoring to your dialogue. To do this, I will go to Properties and select Enable Simulation Evaluation option. I will give maximum points for the totally correct answers and fewer points for the partially correct answers. Let's assign some points for scene number seven as an example. Here we can see that answer number one leads us down a longer route, so we gave fewer points for this answer. For example, just three points. Answer number two takes us down a shorter route, and it's the most correct answer in this scene, so I will give the maximum points for this answer. It will be five points. The last answer leads us to the dead end, so I will give no points for it, right? And now I will click on close. Now I will go ahead and assign points for the answers in this dialog based on the similar technique. While I'm doing this, can you please share who is in your organization you can train in the form of a dialog simulation? Please share it in the chat. I would like to repeat this question one more time. Um, if you could think about whom in your organization you could already uh, train with dialog simulations, could you please go ahead and share with everybody in the chat? Of course, if you're comfortable with sharing, that would be amazing. Yeah, help desk staff, all sales agents, sales reps. Um, I can train techs who will need to know how to set up Leader scenarios, sales representatives, customer service staff. Yeah, exactly. Anybody who is working with clients will definitely benefit from this type of training. That's for sure. Customer facing folks, patient care. Yeah. Trainers, tech specialists uh, to tech questions and support. Um, auditors. Child care and social workers, yeah, wonderful. And I see that Nancy is already done with the granting points. So I think at this point I'm passing the mic, the mic back to you, Nancy. And thanks to everyone for being so active. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pauline. So after granting all the points, let's go back to the properties. And here you can see the maximum score for our simulation. As a passing score, I will choose the minimum score that a learner can receive if they complete the dialogue in one of the routes. In our case, it's 31 points. So I will enter 31 under the passing score for our dialogue. Great, now the simulation is graded. Let's go to the next tab, which is result tab. Here's another trick I'd like to share with you. If you don't have an LMS, but want to know how your users performed in the simulation, 
you can send a report with the results to the email or to the server. Just enter one or more emails to get the report. You can also set up the reports to be sent to the user's email if needed. Great, we are done with the properties here and now let's go back to the player tab. Now we can customize the color scheme and style of our dialog. All right, um, here on the main tab, you can enable options to show title, emotion meter, and the score of the simulation. Now let's move on on the playback and navigation tab. Sometimes it's necessary to save the progress in the dialog. For example, you have a long dialog that contains 100 scenes or even more, and your user accidentally closed the window. Would you like them to start the simulation from the very beginning, or would you like to allow them to continue the dialog from where they stopped the last time? You can choose what point they should start the dialog with by selecting one of these options. You can also allow the user to replay the simulation. Please make sure that this option is selected if you have dead-end scenes in your simulation. Otherwise, your users won't be able to replay it after the dead-end scene. To customize the color of the player elements to make it fit the comparable colors of the organization, you can use color step. The player comes with the several pre-designed color schemes. You can choose a scheme from the color scheme drop-down menu, or you can either choose one of the presets or, or set up your own. If you want to edit the player text messages and button labels, we need to go to the text labels. And to apply all of the settings, don't forget to click on apply and close. I have one more interesting tip that I would like to share with you today. If you want to send this dialogue simulation to your colleague for review, or like for, for example, your supervisor, you can just import, export this script. To do this, I will click on Menu and then Export and select Script. This file will be saved in Word format on your computer and then you can share it with them. You already seen this script. Let me quickly show you it to you one more time. So it will look like this. And I copied all of my phrases from this document. And the last step is to publish our dialogue. I will show you how it works. Let's click where it says Publish to see all available publishing options. The Publish window will pop up and you will see different tabs here. To save the converted dialog on a local disk for further distribution via the internet, we need to select My Computer. If you want to upload the dialog directly to your online platform for collaboration, then select iSpring Space tab. You can also upload it either to our learning management system called iSpring Learn or to your own LMS by clicking self-titled items. I hope that this was a helpful webinar and now we are ready to move on to the Q&A session. Yeah, I think we now are open to the Q&A session. And if you have any questions so far, we will be more than happy to, I'll be more than happy to address them to Nancy. Vershini's question, does the script audio automatically play in accessibility slash screen reader mode? Do you know, Nancy? So yes, uh, sure, it should play uh, in accessibility mode as well if you added this audio to replies or messages for each scene. Uh, Deborah's question, can you teach uh, the script to audio how to pronounce words? So it's a good question. Uh, so and the thing is that you are using some preset voices in text-to-speech option. So and I'm afraid that it's not possible to teach them to pronounce different words uh, in like correct way. But you can also record some voice um, just using that iSpring Talk Master tool, and you can do this by your own, or you can just hire a professional artist and uh, do this with their help. 
Thanks, Nancy. And a question from Ellen. What are the most common mistakes people make when trying to learn how to do this? I assume that Ellen is referring to building the dialog simulation. Please correct oh, I, me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so I, I hope so. Uh, so actually, um, probably the most common mistake is just creating uh, this dialog from the beginning. Like uh, you come up with different ideas to create a dialog and you start it right away before creating a roadmap or script. And in this case, you just have to uh, have like redo some parts of the dialogue, delete some scenes, uh, re-record some audio files. So that's why probably it's the most common mistake. So, and to avoid this, you can just prepare this script uh, it can be done in any softwares or even on a sheet of paper, as I mentioned. And then when you once your script is ready, you can start creating the dialog in iSpring Talkmaster. Probably it will help you avoid to having some redo parts of the simulation and it will be easier for you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And um, <clears throat> uh, another question that I wanted to address to you do you have a template for scripts uh, you could share? Mm, it's a good question. So actually the script uh, depends on your needs, like for uh, which type of people, which type of employees you are going to create this dialogue. So I'm afraid, but we don't have any scripts that we can share with you, but we have uh, some of uh, the simulation on our website under demos section. So you can download it, this simulation from our website and import the script from there. Sorry, export the script from there. Probably mm -hmm. in this case, it will work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a uh, question from William, where are the tips and tricks for audio? Oh, it's a cool question. So talking about audio, I'm going to click on voiceover. So in here, you can uh, import some audio files one by one to each scene. Uh, if you like record it or import just one file or use text to speech option. But the trick here is you can use bulk import. And in this case, you can import several audio files, even for each scene uh, in your dialogue at once. And in this case, you can see here under this column, it's a file name. You will just need to name your audio with this name for each scene. And then you will be able to import them here to this dialog. And these audio files will match with the file name here, and they will be added to a particular scene here. It's a kind of cool feature, especially if you have a lot of scenes and you don't want to import them one by one. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was another question if, um, just let me find it. Can you use spaces or commas to help enunciation? Mm -hmm. So um, actually, yes, you can use it if you would like to use a text to speech option. So if you have a comma, uh, in this case, this character will have a like small pause uh, in the audio. So, and in this case, all of the punctuations that you're using uh, will be affected on the, this recording. So you can use any of them. Mm -hmm. And a question from Maria, but you must record them separately, correct? Yes, yeah, sure. You, you should record them separately. So, um, for example, you can enter your text and then uh, you need to save this audio file and then create a new one. So I'm afraid, but it's not possible to create several of them at once. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of questions. If you can access this through PowerPoint. Yeah, sure. You can create your direct simulation right in a PowerPoint and I can show you how you can do this. Just double click on the iSpring Suite icon and click on courses and create a course. So if you open PowerPoint, it will be the same thing. Just click on, let me open it in PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. 
So and here under iSpring Suite 10 toolbar, you can click on Dialog Simulation and it will open Dialog Simulation. But first, sure, you need to save your presentation. For example, I can save it on my desktop to do it quickly. And then it will open our Dialog Simulation where we can create a new simulation or insert the previous one. Or for example, if you created the simulation Wonderful. in Talk and Master and you have some of them saved on your computer, you can just click on Browse here and insert them to your presentation. In this case, it will be like a part of your course. The uh, questions from Jay, if you use three commas, does, oops, sorry, <laughs> does it extend the silent space and are there other symbols that have an effect on voice? So it's it's an interesting question, actually. So I have you never tested it, uh, but I think that um, it reads only like um, if you use one comma or one dot or one exclamation point. So I'm not sure if you put three commas in there, it will like have a longer pause. Um, another question that I see is from Brian. iSpring is compatible with Apple MacBook. Uh, so talking about uh, MacBooks, uh, so you can use iSpring Suite on them if you install Windows as a second operation system. But there is only one way actually to do this. You cannot use iSpring Suite directly on your Mac computer. You need to install Windows first and then you will be able to install uh, iSpring Suite as well. Okay, uh, if there are no more questions, I think we can wrap up our session. I would like to thank everybody for coming today uh, and for spending this hour with us. Um, of course, thanks to you, Nancy, for covering this uh, quite a big topic for our today's attendees. And hopefully now everybody is ready to move on and get get going with the dialogue simulations and train their uh, learners in the way that works best for them. Great, I'm so happy to hear that. And I hope that you will use all of these tips and tricks that we covered today in your practice. Wonderful. Okay, I wish everybody a lovely day. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye, Nancy, and bye. Bye.